Hey there everybody on LesterBanks.com. I'm Daniel Brudeski and today we are going to take a look at a very exciting tutorial. Well, it's not that exciting, but trust me, it is going to be fun. We are going to take a deeper look in shapes animation. And at this point you are probably thinking, well, Daniel, we already saw many tutorials about shapes animation. Well, I guarantee that in this one we are going to have something new. Let's start by taking a look at the preview. So by the end of this tutorial you hopefully can recreate this and learn the technique for creating this rubber band or bubblegum animation where it sort of merges and then tears apart. We are going to be setting up keyframes using expressions, going to the graph editor and using some effects and of course having a lot of fun. So in After Effects we are going to start by creating a new composition which is Ctrl N on your keyboard and I'm working in 1280 by 720 24 frames per second, 10 seconds long, and call this base. In this comp, I'm going to create a little shape circle. So select the ellipse tool, hold shift on your keyboard, and drag out a circle like this. I'm going to center the anchor point using the reposition anchor point tool, and then with the circle selected, control home to center the circle itself. Now with the shape still selected, I'm going to rename it and call it circle. Now let's create our line. We are going to use the rounded rectangle tool. So select it and drag out our line. Again, position our anchor point in the center and center the line itself. Well, the circle looks a little bit too small. I'm going to open it up and increase its size to like 50 and maybe increase the size of the line as well. I'm just going into the contents of each shape and increasing the size of the content I'm dealing with. I'll extend it and just make it a little bit bigger. Okay, now rename it to the line and I'm going to create a new adjustment layer, Ctrl Alt Y on the keyboard and I'm going to rename it to be Choke. At this point, you probably know we are going to use an effect which is called Simple Choker. So in the Effects and Presets panel, type Simple Choker. It is in the matte category. This is a very cool effect which is not quite used in Shapes Animation, but I found a little use for it. After adding the effect to the adjustment layer, we didn't notice any change. Well, that's because we have to increase the choke matte value. So let's start increasing it. And I'm going to go to like 20. And right away we can see how nicely our circle sort of decays and blends uh, with the line. That's what we are looking for. If I select the circle and move it away from the line, you can see how nicely it sort of stretches. Let's start setting up our keyframes for the circle. So with the circle selected, click P on the keyboard, make sure you're at the beginning of the timeline and click once on the stopwatch. Now I'm going to drag it out of the comp and then go 10 frames forward and bring it back again. And I don't want it to be in the middle, I just want it to meet the line somewhere over here. And then go to like 2 seconds, have it on the other side like this. And then I want it to snap out and then go back again here so we have this little overshoot here here is a little run preview of our animation and there is a little problem which is over here did you notice it that the circle sort of goes back we didn't set any keyframes for this but it still goes there and sort of overshoots and then goes back now when i just started after effects and had this problem with camera animation it was driving me crazy the solution is selecting all of your keyframes right clicking on them and go to keyframe interpolation and the special interpolation over here is set to auto bezier and we want it to be set to linear now do it and the little problem you just had is gone so this is the basic animation we are going for 
Let's try to make it a little bit more interesting by adjusting the curves for the velocity. And we are going to do it by selecting the keyframes and easy easing all of them. So right click keyframe assistance easy ease or just the keyboard shortcut F9. Now go into the graph editor and I'm going to zoom in on the timeline right here. Select this keyframe and drag its handle over here and drag this handle over here. Well, I don't want it to be that extreme. Here where it struggles, the keyframes and the handles are okay for me. Over here, I want to drag this handle over here a little and extend this one, something like this. And you can see what a nice overshoot we get over here. So at the beginning, we have our circle accelerating towards the line. At this long period, it is sort of struggling through the line and then snaps out and overshoots a little, goes back. Now, what I want to do is make this struggle through a little bit more interesting. Well, it doesn't look like it is really struggling. In the preview, we saw that it was sort of jiggling and wiggling and it really gave this feel of struggle through the split. So to create it, we are going to use the wiggle expression and we want to be able to control it. So I'm going to my effects and presets panel and type slider control. Add the slider control to the choke layer. That's just because I'm too lazy creating new nodes. I'm going to lock this panel over here by simply clicking on this lock and rename this slider to be FREC, which stands out for frequency. Duplicate it and call it AMP for amplitude. Here is our position value. Hold ALT on your keyboard and click once on the stopwatch to be able to add an expression. Type wiggle, open brackets, using the pick whip tool, pick the frequency, then type comma, and then pick the amplitude, and don't forget to close the brackets. Now we have an expression that is going to function properly and we can set keyframes for our sliders and it is going to control the wiggle expression. We want to set our first set of keyframes at the beginning over here in 10 frames where the circle meets the line. So set two keyframes. Both of them are going to be zero. And over the next couple of frames, the values are going to increase so I want the frequency to be something around 7 and the amplitude like 2. I might change these values later on if I see the need and then it stays around these values all of this time so with the chalk layer selected click U to reveal the keyframes and set two more keyframes over here and then it simply stops right here. Well, I might want to move these keyframes a little. And over here, it simply stops. So bring these values back to zero. So let's have a look. Very nice. So you can see how it struggles, really wiggles nicely while it is going through the line. So it adds to the feeling of stretching and I call this struggle through the line. But what I mean is the line resisting the go through of the circle. When we are done with this little part, there is still something else we can add to this animation in order to make it nicer. It is another effect and this time it is not from the matte category. We are going to type CC Bender. And this is from the distort category, didn't remember it, so wanted to type it first. So I'm going to add this little effect to the line. And we have a few properties to control over here. Well, you can see that this is a new panel that was created. I'm going to close it and unlock this one. So we don't have too many panels. Right away, we are going to increase the amount. And well, our line simply shifts to the side. We can also go negative values. We also have top and base, just the distance, and the parameter we are going to change now is going to be the style. Right now it is set to bend. 
we are going to change it to Marilyn, Marilyn, not sure how I should pronounce it, but just change it to the second style. And let's increase the amount. And still nothing very interesting is happening. That's because our top and base are set at the top and at the base of our line. And we want them to be set at the edges, at the sides, basically. So take the top one, drag it down, Take the base one, drag it up, make sure the Y value is the same and then increase the amount. From this point in time on, the circle is going to pull the line after it, so it is going to bend it. That's why we have CC Bender in here. I'm going to set a keyframe and go to the point where the circle detaches, which is right about here. And I want to set the amount to something like one, sorry, minus one, maybe even minus 1.5. So you can see that the circle pulls the line after it, and then boom, it detaches, and I want the line to overshoot. So it goes to one and another couple of frames forward minus 0.5 and another couple of frames forward and set it to zero and here is the run preview of what we have achieved and you can see how nicely it reacts with our whole animation it really looks like the circle is pulling on the line Let's go into some advanced stuff, and by advanced I mean creating new compositions. Ctrl N on the keyboard, call it main, and leave all the properties. Click OK, drop the base comp in here, and I'm just going to set a quick background without anything selected in the composition. Double click on the rectangle tool, and it simply creates a rectangle the size of my comp. I'm going to put this shape layer behind my base layer and change its color to some mid gray. All right, now we have a nice background. And now we are going to create another composition. So again, Ctrl N on the keyboard and I'm going to call it Holes. Now we are going to change a few properties over here. Let's change the width and the height to be 50 pixels each. Yeah, that's going to be a pretty small comp. And change the duration to like 10 frames. That's even way too long, but let it be 10 frames and click OK. Now I'm going to zoom in here and create our holes. Now I'm going to select my ellipse tool and I'll give you a little spoiler. The color of the ellipse doesn't matter, only its alpha channel. Well, now let's create our circle like this. And I want it to be stretched a little and I'm going to center it. So center. I'm going to twirl down the ellipse and then go to ellipse path and set keyframes for the sides. Go forward two frames, set another keyframe and then another keyframe after two frames. So over here in the last keyframe, we want our circle to be very stretched, very high. And I'm going to uncheck these constraint proportions. We want it to be very stretched and very thin. Basically, we want it to be invisible over here. So set the X size to zero. So it goes like this. All right. And over here, we want it to be zero on the Y. So the animation goes like this. And that's our circle animating. Now I'm going to duplicate it and again and move them to the side so we have some variation and right now they are all the same so I'm going to click away so nothing is selected click U to reveal all of the keyframes and simply change these values a little basically alternate these values a little bit to have some randomness Anyways, it is going to appear only for four frames, so don't mess for too long with this. Go back to your main comp, drop the whole composition in it, make sure it is above the base layer. And I'm going 
to scrub through the timeline right to the point where our circle detaches from the line right about here now I'm going to take my holes composition and place it over there clicking on the left rectangular brackets so it sort of snaps over there and now let's see how long it takes the circle to detach one two three four five frames with the holes layer still selected I'm going to hold out on my keyboard and click one page down so it just nudges the layer one frame forward and now I'm going to place it a little bit lower in the comp and set the track mat for the base comp to be alpha inverted and right away we can see some holes in here even though we set the comp to be very very small 50 pixels by 50 pixels it is still way too big I'm going to scale it down to 50% I'm going to move it a little bit to the side maybe so it is not that centered and then you can see how our band stretches and there are holes created in it. So that's another very nice detail. I just want to show you another little technique to create this sort of merging and decaying into one another. I'm going to create a new comp and just call it 01 and oh I want it to be a little bigger I want it to be 1280 by 720 by the way, to quickly access your comp settings, Ctrl K on the keyboard. And I'm going to do very quickly this previous setup. And now instead of using the simple choker effect, I'm going to use uh, effects which you are probably more familiar with. So first create a new adjustment layer and I'm going to add fast blur and then levels and now I'm going to increase the fast blur amount and in the levels change the channel to be alpha and then crush the alpha channel simply crush it like this and you have this merged look and you see we have one continuous smooth line now maybe our line is too wide so I'm going to make it a little thinner just like this so that's another way to create this same look and again if we take our circle and pull it away we achieve the same look the reason I use simple choker is because I don't have to use two effects only one well that's it for me maybe there are other reasons I didn't try to dig it up so at this point I think it is a good idea to save the project I especially like this part where the circle has passed the middle of the line and then everything is jiggling and wiggling and holes are being created and the line is being pulled and then everything sort of overshoots in a very nice way by the way you can go into your base composition and add CC Bender to the circle as well so it can also add some very nice look so I'm actually going to do it very quickly and You can see how organic our circle looks. It really feels good, gooey, stretchy and bendy and all of this stuff. So let's sum up what we've learned in this tutorial. First of all, I think we've learned to pay attention to the details. You can see how fairly simple this animation is but we still paid attention to the little details of the bending circle, the bending line, the holes and the struggle through and all of this is just detail that is going to add interest to your final animation. We saw how to use the CC Bender effect as well as the simple choker effects that don't usually get their exposure and we use them very nicely in this little animation. We also saw how to hook up an expression to controllers which is going to be very handy in any sort of animation. 
we used the graph editor to add some interest to our keyframes, not keeping everything linear. And we also saw how to fix this little problem with the special interpolation, which can drive someone completely crazy, I can assure you this, if they don't know the solution. After all, I hope you had fun watching this tutorial. Head on to lesterbanks.com and take a look at this awesome site. It is going to save you some precious time looking around the net because it simply rounds up all of the tutorials, puts them in one place. Well, it's a great place to learn and get inspired. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And be sure to tune in from time to time to see if there are any new tutorials. I'm Daniel Brodesky for lesterbanks.com and I will see you next time.